Should we begin? Uh, thank you, everyone, for downloading in today. Uh, I'm pleased to be joined by Earl Thiessen, Executive Director of Oxford House Foundation of Canada, Lorraine uh, uh, Craig, Director of Parent Empowering Parents Society, and Sheldon Bailey, a great Albertan who recovered from uh, addiction. Uh, when we first took office, uh, our government promised, promised our burdens that we will eliminate the barriers to mental health and addiction recovery. Over the past year, we have been making progress on that promise, including historical $140 million investment to improve our mental health and addiction care system and to create thousands of public funded treatment spaces. Today, I am pleased to announce additional 25 million to build five brand new treatment centers called recovery communities across Alberta. These life-changing facilities will offer long-term residential treatment for mental health and substance use disorders, adding 400 new treatment beds to the province, which is a 30% increase to our current capacity. The 25 million in construction cost is being provided through Alberta Economic Recovery Plan. Recovery communities are treatment option used in more than 65 countries throughout the globe, including the highly regarded Portage model. Also known as therapeutic communities, they take a holistic approach to treatment, focusing in on the mind, body, and spirit. Participants at the facility have the opportunity to relearn and reestablish social functioning, employment skills, and the positive community and family ties. Encouraged by their peers, the peer model, where participants support one another in their path to recovery. Through honesty, hard work, and the willingness to take responsibility to learn, they enter drug-free life and becoming positively engaged citizens. This is a gradual, ongoing process of cognitive change through clinical and peer interventions. Participants take on the role in the recovery community, gradually take more personal and social responsibilities as they progress through the treatment stages. The amount of time a person spends on this varies from uh, three months all the way to a year. After completing treatment, participants are connected with ongoing support to help ensure long-term recovery. This ongoing support is a key element of this model. It is anticipated that the five recovery communities will start accepting patients early next year. Our government is currently working on finalizing locations based on the need and we'll also have more information about this uh, uh, to share with us, with uh, the public in the coming uh, weeks and days and, and months. Uh, thank you all for our partners for sharing their ongoing support uh, to the addiction and mental health recovery for Alberta. I'm so pleased to have a number of uh, partner agencies uh, here that will speak. We know recovery communities will be an important addition to the continuum of care that this government is supporting. I look forward to seeing the difference this, uh, these recovery communities will make in the lives of our burdens. I would now like to invite Earl Thiessen uh, to share his words. Earl. Thank you. Good afternoon. First, I would like to thank the minister and the government for inviting me to participate in this fantastic announcement. To be honest, I'm quite impressed uh, the government is taking a step like this. I'm a massive supporter of the peer-supported recovery living model. As a matter of fact, um, it's a method of recovery that helped save my life and allowed me the privilege to be here to speak with you today. I was homeless for seven years, addicted to alcohol and pharmaceuticals. That was 12 years ago. Now I'm the executive director of the Oxford House Foundation, a peer-supported recovery housing organization that genuinely relies on the community as its strength. When you have like-minded individuals living in a recovery community, we develop similar responses to the issue. When you have your fellow person in recovery right beside you for an extended period, you develop a relationship with them. Your level of comfort and trust tends to grow. 
and with that, your ability to open up and speak about the trauma and the reasons that led to your addiction. It gives you a level of comfort to discuss the childhood trauma that leads us to turn to using drugs and alcohol as a way of numbing or masking the trauma. Recovery communities are going to provide people with the opportunity to develop self-esteem, self-worth, and the ability to make thoughtful, beneficial decisions to move forward in their lives and how to deal with pressure situations with a positive response instead of a negative reaction. For the government to support this and many other methods of recovery, I find it is a massive step in the right direction. Many people say you have to support the addict no matter where they are in their addiction is understandable. Still, you have to be able to provide and have the necessary resources available to do that. Enabling a person to continue using, for me, is not a method of recovery. Recovery-based programs and supports get the best outcome. I know personally of thousands of them. The reality of addiction is my family just laid to rest my 31-year-old sister-in-law due to fentanyl poisoning. And I laid to rest my mother three years ago due to alcoholism. They did not want to recover. They needed it and want and need are light years apart with this deadly disease. With the development of recovery communities, we can hope that those suffering from addiction can avoid similar outcomes and embrace the gift of recovery and all the joys of it. Long-term recovery communities will have a powerful and positive impact on people's lives wanting recovery. Once again, I'm incredibly grateful to be here and I'm excited about the future of recovery in our province with these much needed services the government is supporting. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Earl. Uh, that authentic uh, sharing of experiences and knowledge is so powerful. Thank, thank you so much. Now, next, I would like to invite uh, Lorena Craig, Director of Parents Empowering Parents Society, to share her words. Thank you very much. I also would like to start, as Earl did, by saying thank you for inviting me to participate in this wonderful announcement today. The investment made by our, uh, by our Alberta government into recovery communities will save lives. Um, I stand before you today representing uh, the family as part of the recovery community. Um, I've worked in the fields of addictions for the last 13 years. Um, actually, I'm going to change that statement. I've worked in the field of recovery for the last 13 years. Um, I'm also a person of lived recovery for the last 14 years. And in the last six years, my role has been as executive director of an organization that supports, uh, has family-centered programs for, for families seeking recovery in the midst of it. I think after Earl spoke, we recognize that it is a family illness, um, that it impacts everyone that, uh, that's involved. Our vision is to continue to grow and support families in other municipalities across Alberta. We have family-centered recovery groups that meet weekly with professional facilitators, education and support. We are a part of the recovery community. Strengthening the family and the community connections is absolutely necessary to curb the rubble that's left in untreated addiction and mental health conditions of our loved ones. We need to assist the family unit and the community to be focused on resiliency and solution. Long-term treatment equips individuals to learn new ways of doing life coping strategies, developing the life skills that can help them gain back their citizenship. Life gets better as we increase our skills. Avoidance doesn't always come because of our desire, but can come because of our lack of skill. When we define a difficulty, we can start to move from avoidance to awareness and take steps into recovery. To accomplish this, we need to start with a safe place, a place of supportive community, a recovery community. Today's investment is that step into individual, family, and community recovery. On behalf of the past, present, and future families and communities seeking recovery, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that very, very uh, lovely uh, uh, words and thoughts. 
Uh, I can't be more agreeable that uh, when you're considering family being the most critical part of natural support system to the person who are seeking recovery, uh, you're part of the big journey there. So thank you so much. Uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, um, Sheldon to share uh, his personal aspiration for us. Good afternoon. My name is Sheldon. I'm a person in recovery. Thank you so much, Minister, for hosting us in Stanley Cup City. Um, yes. I am thrilled to be here today to show my support for government's investment in recovery communities. I just want to give a little history. I was born and raised in Newfoundland where drinking is a part of the culture. Uh, I moved to Calgary, uh, Alberta, 20 years ago. I started working in the corporate world um, and I would often have to give presentations in front of groups as a part of my job or present like today. And most of the times uh, I was okay, but sometimes I felt the pressure. So I remember visiting my doctor and my doctor prescribed me clonazepam. And the idea is that it would help me with reducing anxiety. What I started to do was I started to use this pill for business reasons, alone in social settings. I got to the point where I thought I needed this pill to function. Thinking I needed alcohol and drugs to cope became the norm. I had built what would have looked like a successful life, life from the outside. But in reality, I was progressively spiraling out of control. Cocaine became crystal meth, became fentanyl. By late 2015, I had lost everything I held dear. The only thing I was doing was using drugs around the clock. I had hit rock bottom. I decided that I did not want to spend another Christmas killing myself and hurting those who still loved me. So on December 23rd, I went to detox followed by treatment. Now that treatment experience was short term, it was 18 days. Two weeks after completion, I relapsed. I realized that beating addiction requires a long-term commitment. I went to my second treatment center where I stayed directly connected for one year. There I learned that peer support from others in recovery is vital. Sadly, far too many people have not been given the opportunity for long-term care. Let's be serious, the system is broken. Thankfully, our government's investment in recovery communities will change that. Evidence-based comprehensive care combined with support from others in recovery will save lives. It will allow hundreds of Albertans battling addiction to invest in their futures for themselves and their family. I wanna just wrap up. Thank you so much, Minister Luan. And thank you to our government for everything you're doing to invest in a holistic recovery oriented continuum of care. The Alberta model, the Jason Kenney model is without question the right path forward. Thank you. We will now take questions from the phone. As a reminder, people, folks on the phone can get into the queue to ask a question by pressing star one. Operator, can you please put through the first caller? This is Carrie Tate with the Globe and Mail. Go ahead, Carrie. Hi, thanks for taking my question. Minister, I'm wondering if you can um, explain a little bit what happened with the virtual supervised consumption sites and if we should expect to see them um, anytime soon. Are they on the table? Uh, yes, they are. Um, I answered that question uh, weeks ago, I think. Uh, uh, we're working with uh, the researchers, doctors, uh, and the team for that. We're trying to uh, realign uh, the, the proposal to this uh, recovery-oriented continuum care kind of a focus. Uh, so I think in the coming, uh, hopefully in the coming uh, months, we'll have more to say. I'm looking forward to see that one uh, being revised and uh, realigned to the new direction the government is taking. another question next one operator can you put through the next caller uh, there don't appear to be any further questions this time cool was that okay thank you very much and thanks to our partners here thank you for sharing your first-hand experience and knowledge about this so that concludes our uh, news conference thank you